confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 223,131. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 5,273. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 1,197, with total confirmed deaths remaining at 61. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I am Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, August 17th. As California continues to experience one of the worst heat waves in years, state regulators are warning residents of potential blackouts again. Another statewide flex alert was issued today, and residents are asked to conserve energy during the peak hours of 3 to 10 p.m. The California Independent System Operator, or ISO, said customers should be prepared for likely rolling outages during the late afternoons and early evening through Wednesday. Governor Gavin Newsom said temporary service interruptions will be experienced for some customers. He also took responsibility for the state's lack of preparation for a heat wave like the one California is currently experiencing. Cal ISO said outages are the result of excessive use of electricity. So the more everyone conserves, the less likelihood of power outages. Everyone is encouraged to take precaution and pre-cool your home to 72 degrees overnight and in the morning. Then turn your thermostat down to 78 degrees or higher from 3 to 10 p.m. Use a fan instead of the air conditioner. Keep blinds closed to keep the heat out. Turn off unnecessary lights and unplug electronics when not in use and avoid using major appliances like the dishwasher or washing machine during peak hours. You can learn more by signing up at flexalert.org. Well, with more people home due to the health pandemic and indoor malls and theaters still closed, the city is now offering a place for residents to escape the heat. During the anticipated flex alert, residents can head to the Ken Miller Recreation Center today, tomorrow and Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. As temperatures are expected to be at least 10 degrees warmer than usual, forecasters are calling this one of the worst heat waves in years, setting up dangerous conditions across the state. According to the National Weather Service, Torrance will see a high of 82 degrees today with a low of 68. The weather is expected to stay in the mid-80s through the rest of the week. The Ken Miller Recreation Center is located near the corner of Torrance and Madrona Avenue. COVID-19 safety protocols are of course in place and visitors are asked to stay six feet apart, wear a mask, and avoid gathering with others outside of your household. And for those who may be experiencing any of the potential symptoms of COVID-19, they are asked to not enter to help avoid potentially spreading the virus. The California Department of Motor Vehicles announced today they would be closing their doors early each day as a result of this heat wave. DMV locations, which all reopened last month, will shut their doors at 3 p.m. for the next few days to conserve energy and to protect the health and safety of their customers and employees. All customers with and without an appointment will be allowed inside until 2.30 p.m. each day. Now, for those who had appointments between 2.30 and 5 p.m., DMV officials say they will make contact with customers and reschedule the appointment. DMV Director Steve Gordon says they hope to do their part to protect the state's power grid by reducing energy consumption. California Governor Gavin Newsom shared his latest updates at his press briefing today, touching on a number of topics ranging from the state's ongoing heat wave concerns to COVID-19. He kicked off the press conferencing acknowledging the record-breaking temperatures that have taken place over the last two weeks, with the West Coast facing the hottest two weeks in 70 years. It's also caused many wildfires throughout the state with 15 active fires at the moment. Newsom says the heat has also impacted service interruptions with rolling blackouts for customers and will continue through Wednesday evening. He urged everyone to help reduce the stress by conserving energy. Newsom said the state failed to predict and plan for these shortages and says he plans to immediately address the issue. State officials are deploying resources and working to reduce energy use as well. 
Newsom signed an emergency proclamation to shift energy consumption. They are also attempting to reduce the amount of energy being used at ports across the state. As for COVID news, Newsom shared there are 14,861 positive coronavirus cases that have been updated from the state's backlog. As of yesterday, there were 6,496 positive cases in the state. The positivity rate in the past 14-day period has dropped to now 6.5 percent, which shows stabilization. Hospitalizations are also continuing to decline. There are currently 42 counties still on the state's monitoring watch list. The Los Angeles County Department of Public Health also held their weekly press briefing this afternoon, sharing updates on the state of the health pandemic. Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer says the county may be returning to slowing the spread of the virus based on the recent data. Key indicators that support this includes dates from the last month, ranging from July 17th to August 14th. The county shows hospitalizations have decreased steadily by now 30 percent. The decreasing number in hospitalizations is one of the best indicators that the efforts of the last few weeks are actually working. The daily reported new cases over the last month from the same time period of mid-July to mid-August also showed a steady decline of new positive cases. The average in July was about 3,200, and by mid-August, the average dropped to just a little over 2,000 per day. The seven-day average of positive COVID-19 tests in late July was at 10% positivity, and by mid-August, that rate had decreased to about 6%. The number of deaths are also showing a consistent downward trend. As of late July, the average of daily deaths it was about 43, and by mid-August, that average dropped to 30 deaths per day. The county's benchmarks also show they are meeting five of the six indicators for the state. While the case per rate is still at 295, the county says data is showing a steady decrease as well as and hopes to bring it down to the threshold of 100 cases per 100,000 residents to help get the county off the state's watch list. Dr. Ferrer thanked the public for all that they are doing to help curb the spread of the virus and encourages everyone to continue to wear those face masks, avoid crowds, wash hands often, and isolate if you are sick. Two of the nation's largest drugstore chains are now offering the seasonal flu vaccine with coronavirus safety precautions in place. CVS and Walgreens says they will check patient temperatures, screen for potential symptoms or illness, and wear face shields for the first time when delivering flu vaccines. CVS officials say they expect to administer more than double the number of flu shots than in past seasons. Walgreens also expects at least a 30 to 50 percent increase in demand. Patients at both chains are encouraged to call ahead and make an appointment, wear that face mask, and complete the paperwork in advance. Both stores also announced plans to increase disinfectant protocols between every patient to protect the public from the spread of the virus. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends anyone over the age of six should get a flu shot. That's the age of six months they should get a flu shot. Officials say flu vaccines have shown to reduce the risk of flu illness, hospitalization, and death. This year, officials say getting a vaccine this fall will be more important than ever, not only to reduce the risk of getting sick, but to help conserve potentially scarce health care resources due to the current health pandemic. Well, a new shortage was announced during this health crisis that could be disappointing news for many pizza lovers. Yes, pizza shops throughout the USA, they are dealing with a shortage of the popular topping pepperoni. Bloomberg reported that pizza restaurants across the nation face a growing shortage with the cost of the processed meat nearly doubling compared to before the pandemic. Pepperoni is made from a mixture of cured pork and beef that's seasoned with spices. The shortage is blamed on production problems with some meat plants that have reduced production, coupled with the growing demand from consumers over the last five months. According to a survey conducted by YouGov, a majority of people selected pepperoni as one of their top three favorite pizza toppings. 
Well, the Democratic National Convention kicks off today and no doubt will look much different. The four-day presidential nominating event that traditionally draws thousands will be held online with Joe Biden accepting the nomination virtually. While this was originally set for the week of July 13th, it was delayed due to the pandemic. The main events will be the two hours of prime time programming for each of the four nights from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. The event originally scheduled for the 17,000 seat Pfizer Forum. The convention was moved to the Wisconsin Center and is now serving as a production hub for the convention. Delegates were asked back in June not to attend in person, and organizers announced last week that no out-of-town speakers will be traveling. The theme each night is wrapped around unity, with Monday's theme titled We the People, Tuesday's Leadership Matters, Wednesday's A More Perfect Union, and Thursday's finale, America's Promise. Keynote speakers include former First Lady Michelle Obama, Bernie Sanders, Andrew Cuomo, Amy Klobuchar, Jill Biden, Hillary Clinton, Elizabeth Warren, Keisha Lance Bottoms, Chris Coons, and California's very own Gavin Newsom. Los Angeles County is launching a $100 million rent relief program today. The federal coronavirus relief money will be managed by the Los Angeles County Development Authority and will pay landlords directly to help settle unpaid rent. Since this morning, already 10,000 applications have been submitted. The program hopes to assist upwards of 9,000 families who've been financially hurt by the health crisis. Residents unable to pay their rent and living on 30% of the medium income could receive up to $10,000. Those at 50% of the median income could get up to $7,500. The eligible income limit for a household of four people, including money earned by all adults in that household, is roughly $56,000. Residents can check their eligibility online. Now, reasons for inability to pay rent could be loss of income due to reduced hours or business closures, medical costs related to COVID-19, increased child care costs or loss of income. The window to apply is two weeks beginning today. Qualifying residents living in Torrance can apply by going online. That's 211LA.org slash LA County slash rent relief. The California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, or GoBiz, is reminding business owners that the deadline to file for the California Competes tax credit is today. Businesses of any industry, size, or location can apply for a piece of the $80 million available in tax credits. This is an income tax credit available to businesses that want to relocate to California or stay and grow in the state. Businesses are encouraged to request the amount of credit needed to help the business create new full-time jobs that might not otherwise exist in California. Applicants are analyzed based on 12 different factors, including the number of full-time jobs being created to the amount of investment and strategic importance it has to the state or region. So far, more than 1,000 businesses have been awarded. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is inviting the community to learn all about what the chamber has to offer when becoming a member. Chamber 101 will be held online tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The informational meeting is for both prospective members as well as those who've recently joined. Now you must register in advance and it's free to join. Just go to torrancechamber.com. The Zoom meeting is about an hour long. If you have questions, you can also call 310-540-5858. The city's residential and arterial pavement improvement project continues this week, which may impact drivers over the next few days. Torrance Public Works crews will be working on repaving roads north of Artesia Boulevard and east of Yukon Avenue. Delays are expected and city officials suggest following signs to allow for work to continue throughout these areas.
The city of Torrance is seeing a spike in coyote sightings. Yes, the police Torrance department here, right here, reported today that there have been 18 coyote sightings recently. Officials say to keep coyotes away, put garbage in tightly closed containers that can't be moved, remove sources of water, bring pets in at night, and don't leave pet food outside. If you have bird feeders, Put them away at night. If you have fallen fruit and compost piles, remove them from your property as well. Other tips include never feeding or attempting to tame coyotes. You can trim ground level shrubbery to reduce hiding places. And if you face a coyote, make loud noises. If this doesn't work, try throw rocks in their direction. The city offers a 24-hour coyote hotline. You can call 310-618-3898 to report any sightings. You can also fill out a coyote sighting survey or incident report at torrentca.gov. Torrance City officials will be back for their virtual city council meeting tomorrow night, and you can check out the meeting's agenda online right now. The live meeting will start at a new adjusted time just for this week, beginning at 7.30 p.m. The agenda is available at torrentca.gov. The public is encouraged to participate by emailing ahead or calling in during oral communications. You can do so by emailing council meeting public comment at torrentca.gov or calling 310-618-2404. You can tune in tomorrow right here on City Cable as well as online at torrentca.gov, Facebook as well as on YouTube. Well, with summer sadly winding down and the new 2020 school year just around the corner, we want to hear what your plans are to help your kids succeed in the age of COVID-19. We'd love to hear tips or suggestions that you might have that other families could find helpful. Torrance Unified School District is slated to begin its first day of distance learning on Wednesday, August 26. There are parent training sessions online tomorrow from 9 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. You can go to TUSD.org to sign up. Now, whether you have a preschooler or a teen in high school and every grade in between, we want to hear from you. And parents working from home, managing distance learning for your kids, and making personal and professional adjustments, share with us how you plan to make it work for your family as we're all in this together. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community. Feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us all of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, two local residents are keeping our city streets clean. Meet Tim and Zachary Smith. They take time out of their day to keep the sidewalks clean near Adams Elementary School. They make sure that trash is picked up, curb on curbside trash or on the sidewalks as they take great pride in their community thank you tim and zach what a great way to show how much you care for your community now if you have a great story to share be sure to email us we'd love to hear from you and that is our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. as Hiba Samad brings you the latest updates. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.